deep in the parched desert sands of ancient Osirian. Long forgotten secrets are becoming unearthed that could threaten the security of the entire region. Through cursed tombs, undead crypts, and towering pyramids, our unlikely band of heroes must rise to the challenge and find the secrets of the Mummy's Mask. Last time on the Mithril Tabletop. How dare <laughs> you go. hit me? You go bam bam. Tawny, yes! It did something. Oh boy, this bodes well for the rest of the campaign for me. You oh wanna my. know what my health was? Don't tell me what Fucking 22. 22. Uh, I won't stop until the whole party is dead. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Katie and I play Karith, the Elven Inventor. I hope you all have been enjoying the first three episodes of the Mithril Tabletop's Mummy's Mask Adventure. Our amazing GM, Waba, has already done an amazing job at bringing this world to life for us and we've barely even gotten started. We're not very far into this adventure yet, but we've already been starting to make some amazing memories with each other and had some very cool and funny moments. And I don't know about everyone else, but I definitely have a favorite moment already. Which leads me into what I wanted to talk about for this intro. I wanted to talk about my first ever Pathfinder 2nd Edition experience and how it has turned me into a bit of a meme with our group. A few years ago, Wabit invited me to join in his campaign of Tyrant's Grasp, a 1E adventure he had converted into 2E. I accepted as I had always wanted to try D&D or a game like it. As someone brand new to TTRPGs in general, especially Pathfinder, I didn't quite understand how spells with burst effects worked yet. But boy, was I about to. As my first ever action ever in this campaign, I chose to cast the spell Fireball in the middle of a rather small room filled with my party members and the enemies. Of course, as these things typically go for me, the only ones who failed that save were my party members, while all of the enemies critically succeeded and took no damage. Thus, I was then reborn as a bit of a meme for the group, and they have never let me live it down to this day. Mummy's Mask is a whole new adventure, but I can already tell that we are going to make some amazing memories that make just as much of an impact as that fireball incident, if not more. And my hope is that you all will continue to join us for the ride to make those memories with us. But I have rambled on long enough. Without further ado, I present to you episode four. Cluck this, I'm out. So, I have some news. Well, actually, somebody else has some news. Hey, Alyssa. Oh, hey. <laughs> Thanks for joining us again. It's good to be back. Yay. Do you miss it? You've been, you've been away, and we've missed you. Where have you been? Oh, I was in South Korea. Yee! Yay! Sounds fun. The pictures looked so fun. I wanted to be there. I was like, whoa, this looks so cool. Yeah, it was it was really interesting because the last time I had been was uh, in 2019. So COVID had actually changed like a lot of stuff. Like a lot of things are a lot more um, automated and you have like a lot of the fast food restaurants and like even normal restaurants, this really nice pasta place we went to, you just ordered from a kiosk and then you sat down and they called your number and you went and picked up your food and there was like no human contact. That sounds oh so God. amazing. 
That is like an introvert's dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear there's a lot of those like no. They have a lot of those con- in Asia, from what I've heard. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Like uh, Japan has some like ramen shops that do that too. Don't yes, they? Yes. And sushi Ooh, places. They had yes, the sushi places that the have the little like conveyor belt you can grab sushi off of. It. I've always wanted to go to one of those. <laughs> they have one do in Ohio. Do not go to one of those think. because <laughs> don't go to it. Uh, there's a TikTok challenge going around where people oh, will take no. the sushi off, lick it, and then put it back on. <gasps> oh, what? Why? It breaks so, my heart. Why so are people despicable? Ew. Yeah. No, like, why I gotta be that way. This? Don't do that. I've always wanted to go to it's, one of these sushi that, places. It's that ice cream oh, challenge gosh. all over again. Yeah. What? What? Can people just go back to, you know, um, normal challenges? Not being Only weirdos. ruining their own lives? <laughs> <laughs> no so okay but like legit remember the tide pod challenge what what oh. what it was like people were actually dying from that or at least getting hospitalized yeah, right very yeah it's their own stupid fault why why do people do that and now every time i have to go to like a convenience store to buy like or to buy it's anything, behind like see... a lock yeah it is it's next to the cigarettes i'm like how is laundry <laughs> detergent as deadly because as cigarettes people are fucking stupid i know it's so dumb it's so dumb like I, I remember the early days of the internet where, where like the dumbest challenges like the cinnamon challenge, the cinnamon yeah. challenge or the the, the planking challenge. challenge. Do you remember that? <laughs> the planking yeah. challenge. That was so dumb. The sprite challenge though is hilarious. <laughs> that, What's that, that one? one? Is hilarious. You try to drink a bottle of of uh, Sprite Zero without burping. Sprite oh, Zero no. is like the most carbonated Sprite. Yeah. Oh, no. It's all oh, like I don't know how oh. people can do it without burping. I have heard that Sprite is like really carbonated. Oh, it is. Like, you have yeah. to, like, open them carefully. Because my that's my one of my mom's favorite drinks. You can't just simply open a Diet Sprite. Like, you got to do it, like, in <laughs> tiny little increments. <laughs> or else it will explode like, all over you. Squad. I've gotten into the habit. One does not simply, one does not simply open a open, Diet Sprite. <laughs> open a Sprite. Zero. I've gotten into the habit of opening Dr. Pepper's that way because I've had many explode on me. Oh, I also love Dr. Pepper, oh, and I'm sad I can't have caffeine. I thought it was supposed to help with explosive. Oh, wait, no, that's a different thing. What? I never actually, like... <laughs> nothing, nothing. Huh? It's the opposite. It helps you... It was, wait, what? It was helped to not... <laughs> nothing. I got it backwards. Aaron's Aaron, talking Aaron's about something exploding. <laughs> I was thinking. Oh I was thinking it helped with, you know... <laughs> digestive system but it's the opposite it makes you explode <laughs> i said never mind you guys kept pushing <laughs> and the more you explain it the funnier it doesn't get <laughs> speaking of exploding things oh god uh, when I... we last left our heroes they kind of exploded please don't please don't start our episode this way aaron's dying guys give her a second <laughs> please she no, is no, no, no. conversation That's an needs cut. Segway. Thank <laughs> no, you, Ashley. No, don't Technically, make it. Technically, Tariq is dying. Oh no, that was perfect. I didn't even mean to do that. <laughs> No, 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 Wabba, well, Wabba, you got it all wrong. The one that's dying is McFour. I don't want to talk right. about Tariq it. Tariq is, is now stabilized. McFour is dying. But either way. Somebody help me. Have me. <laughs> Lord help me. When we last <laughs> left our heroes, they had finally made it to their first site, the tomb of Akintepi. With murder Who dice. was this person, though? And what kind of life did they lead? What treasures did they leave behind for the mortal realm? These questions will have to wait for now as we watch our heroes face off against their first threat. Uh, let's just say that McFour and Tariq have seen better days. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as they finish the fight, though, uh, Tani has her ear twitch and she hears a whispered message in her ear. Whispered as in the spell, by the way, so no one else can hear this message, except for right? Tani. Huh? Message, right? You're right. Message. It is a cantrip. Um, but it sends a message directly into the ears of the person you are, uh, you're, who's receiving your message as if they were speaking to you normally. And Tani, you hear the following message. Tani, I'm being attacked. I need your help. Come save me. And you immediately recognize the voice. It is your turn in initiative. What do you got for me? So immediately, like, Tani kind of freezes. And she, like, looks around because she's like, I know that voice. Where, Where's Habibi? I know that voice. What? What? 
And then she like looks around and she realizes no one else heard that voice. Like she, like no one else is reacting. Obviously McFour can't react, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, but no one else is reacting to this. And um, she she looks over to the only spellcaster that she sees in the group that's up um, uh, to Kepri. And she's like, did you hear that? Did, what? Did you, did you hear Habibi? Uh, no. Should I have? Oh, my gosh. Oh, he must have sent me a message. Are, are you able to track where that message came from? Oh, me? Uh, Kepri, roll me a religion or nature check. Well, you know what? As a druid, I think that uh, nature might be our our goal here. So I'm going to look at Tawny and I'm going to think really hard. I'm like, I'm going to try, okay? I'm going to try because I know things are getting desperate. Tariq's on the ground, McFour is on the ground, and we just started. <laughs> um, all right, you immediately recognize the telltale signs of message, and you know that message has a range of about 120 feet. Uh, so that means that uh, that Habibi is nearby. However, there are more desperate people uh, still in need. For example, Tariq is still unconscious in front of you. McFour is actively bleeding out, and don't forget, he's very close to death. He's at dying three currently. It is not. Oh, he's not I okay. Am at dying three. Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> Tawny, Tawny, I I think I can sense him, and I think he's I or Habibi. I think Habibi's close, but I know that McFour and Tariq need help right now. So hopefully Habibi is within about 120 feet. <laughs> so hopefully. mechanical. So so specific. I am. I wonder why that is. Specificities. I've had a, a lot of experience. We've stri- we've practiced sending messages back and forth until we can't send it anymore. And it's about 120 feet when I noticed that spell failed. <laughs> 119 like, feet. I'm fine. But the second I take a step further, whoa! Hold on. Now it's broken. It's like when you have like walkie talkies as a kid, and you're yeah. trying to figure out the distance that you can use them. Exactly. Okay. So. Um, GM, was that an action? Uh, no, you can talk to Kepri uh, for free. We're, we're, we're kind of doing this loosey-goosey a little bit. He Technically, it was Ke- one of Kepri's time. actions, uh, but you know what? You still have all three of your actions. Okay, so I have a potion out. I remember that I took a potion out, um, as my last action from the last turn. Um, and then, so I'm going to administer the potion that I have to McFour. Um, so that just takes a, a, a manipulate action, or I guess interact action. You just pop the cork and pour it down his like gurgling throat. Like, <sighs> yes. And he gets one hit point. It's enough! <laughs> <laughs> one hit point that is, is all enough. I need, man. <laughs> okay, so is that, that's two actions now, right? First, well, first action, you just poured it. You said it was already in your hand, right? Yes. Yeah, so there you go. You poured it down McFor's throat. That is your first interact action. You have two left. Okay. My last two actions, um, Kepri pointed in a general direction that Habibi was in, right? Uh, she identified the spell. She was not able to tell you which direction it was coming from. You'll have to roll me a survival check to try and track where the sound is coming from. Um, I'll also allow a perception check, but that'll be a little bit harder. Survival, survival. Um, 21 total. Uh, 21. Uh, you can hear uh, some like commotion happening uh, not too far from here, uh, off to the distance, and you can travel in that general direction with your final action. Yes, and that's what I would like to do. All right. So you run off uh, off the, the map. Uh, what is your movement speed so I can keep track of this? 30. Uh, 30 let me feet. double right. check. Let me double check. No, 25. 25. 25? All right. Yes. So you travel about 25 uh, feet. Uh, all right. We're going to move on to Tariq. It is... Uh, never mind. You're unconscious. We're going to move on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What a burn. Wait, no, wait. You're not here. unconscious. You're oh. prone. No, that sound probably sounds wrong. <laughs> well, I think he's still <laughs> unconscious. He's just stabilized. Oh. Yes, he's stabilized. Yes. So, like, because I didn't heal any? Because he's still at zero hit points. Oh. Yes, exactly. Uh, Kepri just used the uh, stabilize uh, action uh, to just render you not dying. Um, all right, so is there anything else you can do at all? 
as I'm unconscious? Pray to the gods. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, <laughs> all right, Kareth, it is your turn. Uh, well, I can't use any unstable traits. Um, which way did Tawny run off to? The north or the south? Uh, it doesn't matter. We're just playing that theater of the mind. You I mean, I was, follow her? I was going to follow her because I can't do anything to help heal these hooligans. So I was going to follow her to try and help because right. she sounded pretty panicked. So I'm assuming that Habibi, Habibi is in some kind of trouble. And... Uh, well, you didn't hear Habibi. You only see no, no, Tawny no, no. running away. No, I'm basing that off of Tawny's, Tawny's reaction. Right. Okay, perfect. Um, sorry, what is your movement speed? As an elf, I assume that's a uh, 30 feet? I believe so. Let me double check. Yes, 30 feet. All right. So you follow for your first action. You're just sprinting off right away? Yep. I don't have anything right, so else that I can do to help. It's all you up to you, ha- Capri. You don't, you don't have a potion or anything that you can... I mean, I do, but <laughs> it'll take me all three actions just to administer it to one person. Because I don't have anything. <laughs> Again, Tariq is passed out. <laughs> I mean, you can could, could you, yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, can you not take it out, toss it to Kepri, and then run? Uh, I mean, would she have to do some kind of save to catch it and have it not break? Uh, I mean, I'll probably do a reflex uh, save for her to catch it. My reflex and if it breaks, she can just lick it up off the floor. Yeah, you know what? If it breaks, then I'm going to try to scoop it up. The ones that need it are unconscious. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to scoop it up, and I'm going to just shove it in his hand, before. in his mouth. Oh, Lordy, help me. <laughs> Don't worry. We got this. He's going to be okay. Okay. We're going way off the rails right now. <laughs> Always. Did you right, expect so I... anything less? Kara, so I guess I'll... As... Kara, throw it. I'll take one wait, out. Wait, wait. I, I have an have idea. Minor. Why don't you give it to... Why don't you give it to Ramsey since he's right beside of you and he can walk it over to Capri? Oh, that's a good no idea. Check. No check necessary. It's fine by me. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ramses right. is a good boy. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take out one of the potions for my first action. Um, I went ahead and linked it in the chat. Let me yep. subtract that on my inventory. Um, and then second action, I'm going to gingerly put it, <laughs> hold it out to Ramsey so he can take hold of it and not break the glass with his sharp, sharp teeth. And then final action, I will... I tail it after Tawny. All right, so you have caught up to Tawny, uh, more or less. Uh, we're going to move on to Kepri. It is your turn, and Ramses, in his mouth, has a potion. And what we're going to do first, then, for my first action is, I bet you know what I'm going to do. Andrew. Activate Ramses! <laughs> Activate Ramses! So Ramses <laughs> is going to be activated. He has two actions. The first one is he's going to move over right here next to Kepri and Tariq. Oh, there it goes. All right, anyway. And he's right next to Capri and Tariq now, and he's just uh, whimpering a little bit, and he's going to hand, that will be his next action, and just gently hand the potion over to Capri. All right. Capri's going to take it, and she's going to look at poor Tariq, and she's like, you cannot leave me alone, okay? You can't. <laughs> and she's going to use that potion on him. She's going to go ahead and just, even though in real life this would cost some, might cost someone to aspirate, she's going to go ahead and give it <laughs> Oh my you gosh, there's a nurse. <laughs> there's, there's our nurse. <laughs> oh, look at that. Five healing points. It's not bad. Not at all. So hopefully now she's uh, looking at him and dripping it down his mouth, trying to make sure that he's okay and careful, and she sees him cough a little bit, <laughs> you know, and exactly. He's coughing a little bit. She's like, okay, Tariq, you need to get up, okay? And then she's, uh, she's like, you cannot do that again. You have to stay upright. You go down again. I'm not giving you a potion that Kara gave you. <laughs> anyway, and then for her, and then I don't think she has anything else she needs to do for her last action. Um, mm-hmm. Could she use healer's tools at all? Uh, yeah, I think you already used your battle medicine though. I think I did too. So, all right. I, I think that's all um, I can do. Perfect. Then we move on to Mick Four. You're on the ground, but you just woke up, and now you see uh, uh, an elf and a cat running away from you. What do you want to do about it? So, uh, as soon as. I get the one healing back. Um, McFour opens his eyes and he's on the ground and he just pops up from his prone position and says, all right, where are they at? And then sees all the dead scorpions around him and says, oh man, I must have blacked out for a second. <laughs> I think I need to do that again. And then he just <laughs> falls back down prone again on the floor. <laughs> uh, okay. 
All right. So you stand up first action and then decide to fall yep. prone second action. And then action. my last two actions, I'm just like catching my breath. <laughs> I got one okay. HP. I can't do anything. Uh, right now. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, Tawny, I assume you're going to spend the next three actions just trying to follow that sound. Hoo, 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 hoo. Run. Fair enough. Um, all right. And that leads you into the next area, but we're going to wrap up the rest of this round before we jump into the next map. Tariq. You just wake up on the ground next to Kepri. What would you like to do? Oh, Kepri? What? Hey. What happened? And he's kind of like well, pretty out of it. He's like, you know, been stung by the scorpion and, and then he's just like <laughs> been brought back to consciousness. Well, uh, you got hit pretty hard, but you're okay. <laughs> Tariq kind of like, he's still laying down. He like looks down at like his chest where he's got like he's got all this blood <laughs> uh, all over his robes and is like what <laughs> and he's gonna start yeah, sitting up got... <laughs> and he's gonna start i think rummaging through i think he's got a, a potion too so he's gonna rummage through his bag and he's like uh i'm gonna take this potion real quick <laughs> and he's gonna like kind of still like really feeling kind of weak and he's going to take another healing potion Heck oh, yeah, so look at you. Full healing. Well, full for that. That's really good healing. Eight on the die? I mean, that's like the max number. That's max healing? Yeah. Um, Three, do I have any more actions? Good? Yeah, because that was, uh, that was two just left. to get the to take it. So with the, his last action, he's going to like kind of stand up a little bit shaky at first. And even though uh, Kepri's kind of short, he's going to like lean like he's gonna put his hand on her shoulder just to kind of like <laughs> get his balance real quick and then before he can do anything um ramsey gets really excited <laughs> and jumps up on him and is like whoa boy and then like <laughs> and just like you just see he's kind of like shaking at first and then he looks around and he goes what's going on where's where'd everybody go is, is um, uh mcfour okay <laughs> and he's like just <laughs> mcfour is not even making a sound just like staring like on the ground he's like um what's going on here <laughs> Uh, McFour is fine, I think. I mean, he just kind of did this, his own little thing over there. But he stood up, so we're good. Um, he just went back down. While she's I'll, I'll saying check on that, McFour sticks his hand up in the air and gives a big thumbs up. I'm okay! And then it just falls back <laughs> on him again. <laughs> McFour's fine. Um, Habibi, I think, was trying to send a message to Tawny, so Tawny and Karek went to go explore that. It didn't sound good. And um, you drank a potion, and I'm just curious, did that taste good? Mm, I mean, it tastes better than the sand that I currently have in my mouth. I would like a bottle of water, <laughs> but we can get that later. <laughs> just... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so this is the mothering we're talking about. He's like, he's, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling quite parched. <laughs> Water, please. I thought I had <laughs> water. great water. water oh I no! <laughs> oh lordy, not this again. We don't. We don't need another Cyclops incident. Right? <laughs> <laughs> to explain to our audience, okay. previously we, we had played in Ruins of Asland, and we encountered a certain Cyclops in that adventure. No other context will be provided, but. Uh, Ashley's character was a witch, a primal witch, and she had access to create water. And she, uh, I was just gonna let her just like create water and like slowly pour it into the into the poor Cyclops' mouth because she was, uh, the Cyclops was very thirsty. But then she said, "Oh no, that's two gallons of water!" And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh really?" And then from there we just <laughs> played off that the Cyclops opened its mouth and then and then Ashley's character, <laughs> water in its mouth. <laughs> Just waterboard it. Just waterboard the Cyclops. <laughs> anyway, I don't have, for Tariq, Tariq, I do not have create water right now. Remind me to prepare that again. That way I can get everyone some water. But also, let's make sure we have a bucket around because uh, I just have a feeling it'll go badly if I don't. Yeah, this is definitely more than six seconds, so we're going to move on to Karen. <laughs> Kareth, you have three actions remaining. What would you like to do? Still following Tawny. All right. Uh, you are faster, so you will actually overtake her and be in the lead just by a few feet. Uh, uh, how does she know where to go? 
well, I assume by the time she catches up to you, you guys, it's only 120 feet. Uh, by this point, you can probably follow by your sense of hearing. Okay. It's 120 it's feet exactly. Um, 120 feet exactly. To the inch. To the um, inch. Kepri, now it is your turn. <laughs> oh, um, I guess I need to follow where they're going, so I'm going to motion to Ramses to, and Tariq, and I'm going to yell at McFour. I'm going to say, McFour! We gotta go! And I'm gonna be like, come on guys, we gotta go. And I'm going to start going toward that general direction too. I'm gonna follow where Kareth and Habibi were. Fantastic. Uh, and then oh, and Tawny, to... sorry. Of course. McFour, you start seeing more and more people passing uh, by you. What would you like to do? Uh, McFour's gonna just like watch everybody going by and then he's gonna look around and see that Tariq is still there and he says, oh, okay, I'm still good. If I'm with Tariq, I'll, I'll be okay. And then he just kind of like lays back again. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're going to move on to Tawny. And for this, we're actually going to go to another scene. You find yourself here in this scene and uh, you're just running down the, the, the broken streets of the necropolis and there's ruins of ancient Osiriani buildings all over the place and just a few feet away you see Habibi and he's being surrounded by these chickens oh and my they gosh. are screeching a cacophony around him they're flapping their wings and you see feathers and and talons and wings and all all manner of uh, of bird like appendages flapping about and uh you can barely see Habibi flailing in between habibi don't you know you're never supposed to mess with the chickens and as we zoom as the camera zooms in closer to habibi flailing about within these chickens we cut to black and we wake up again uh to the morning of the ceremony the ceremony um of the lottery but also the ceremony of a uh Alyssa, why don't you tell us a little bit about a all right, so Amos is Habibi's older sister, uh, just by a year, and they look very similar. They both have uh, dark, curly black hair. Um, they're both like very attractive, and so the only thing with her is she is the favorite. She is the heir to her family's fortune and they love her. Like she's done everything perfect, the best child. But Habibi on the other hand is kind of like, you know, the, the family disappointment. You can't do anything right. Um, well, uh, we, we see Habibi waking up in the morning and as he wakes up, he is in this lavish, estate this house is opulent it is fancy it is very well decorated with ancient osiriani uh motifs and blended in with a lot of modern osiriani motifs as well you see uh faux hieroglyphic paintings on the walls uh they're ornately decorated and there's gold accents everywhere uh he wakes up in this large massive bed his parents are very wealthy um and as he's getting ready to leave, his mother approaches him uh, as, she, as she sees him, like, putting on his adventuring gear. And she approaches him like, oh, uh, dear, uh, what, what is it uh, you're doing exactly? Uh, wh where, are you, where are you going today? It's the lottery. My, my adventuring party, my companions and I are, are supposed to go off on an, ad an adventure today. And you see Habibi's mom, she kind of like rolls her eyes like, oh, that silly thing. Uh, no, don't, please, please stay away from that rabble. That, the, the, the common folk are beneath us. You don't, you don't have to trouble yourself with them. Why, why, can't you, why can't you pay attention to your family like your sister Amos? Don't you know something very important is happening today? Um, what's happening today? Like, it's, it's for Amos? Oh, you never pay attention. Yes! Osiris, help me. Amos is getting a new horse, and we must be there for her on this very special occasion. It's a very beautiful horse. Oh. Um, I mean, I 
guess I can go for a Moe's, but like my friends are really counting on me and like No, 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 no. Enough of that. Enough of that. I won't hear anymore. And she like walks up to you and grabs you by the by the arm and like pulls you out of your room. Now, take this satchel off. You don't need your bags. Here, come with me. Come with me. Here, don't be silly. We need to we need to get you all prettied up for today's evening uh evening celebrations. Uh and uh she drags you along and as she does, she's like ranting on and on about how great Amos is, how she was um, involved in all these business transactions to uh, ensure this horse was bred perfectly, that this is the purest kind of like finest horse around in all the lands of Osirian. And I don't know, how does Habib respond to all this? He just kind of like goes along with the flow. Like he's been through this, this circus before, like... He knows what's expected of him, and he just is kind of, like, fed up with it. But he's like, if he can get it over with, it'll be fine. Well, as you uh, as you follow along with your mom and she drags you along, she takes you outside and she starts, uh, like, showing off uh, your, to, to your sister, uh, uh, Moe's, and your dad's there, and he's, like, I don't know, like, smoking, like, a hookah jar or whatever. And he's like, yes, yes, quiet, Merlin. Uh -huh. And you guys are just, like spending time as a family. I wouldn't say enjoying it, but uh, Moe's is, like, like washing in this attention she's like yes yes i'm the i'm the favorite one kind of thing uh but every once in a while you'll catch a side long glance she's like i'm sorry about mom and dad but i mean this is my special day off in the distance though you can hear cheers and celebration is like off in the distance hundreds of feet away the lottery is happening and you can hear people having fun Ugh. and you can't help but think you wish you were there if only if only i were there that'd be so much better uh that evening uh you're standing in front of uh a mose and your parents and the horse and it really looks amazing it's like this and the big horse <laughs> and the horse it's this big beautiful black stallion um and habibi's uh habibi your dad is just uh kind of like looking at the horse he's like slowly petting it he's like look at this horse habibi don't you wish you could have managed to to breed a horse as magnificent this one but i know you're not you're not for this world you don't understand these things but if only you were more like your sister of mose but but dad i grow these really great plants and osiris like values all life oh plants plants pla plants are for the servants you are you are part of the higher class you look at this horse this horse is great why can't you do something great like a mose a mose and she like his your sister pops up from like behind the horse. She's like straddling the putting a saddle on, um, and she goes, "Yes, Dad." And she goes, Moses, you, you, what, "What is the name of this horse right now?" She's like, uh, "Well, I was I was thinking of naming it something honoring um, honoring the the ancient gods of uh, of Osiris uh, of Osirian. I, I was thinking something along the names of uh, Osius." after Osiris and he he goes oh Osiris that's a that's a fine name for a fine stallion Habibi why can't you do something great like this forget about your plants I just wish you would be something great like a Moe's I never saw a horse heal someone oh bird oh nonsense and he kind of like ignores you um and then he eventually turning his back towards you he's like now Habibi I, I expect you to be on your best behavior tomorrow he's not even looking at you he's just paying attention to a Moe's and this horse Tomorrow we're gonna have uh, a race to celebrate Amos's uh, new horse, Osius. Uh, and I need you to not be, you know, you. If you can just sit there, be quiet, and look pretty, that would be fantastic. All right, that's a good lad. Off you go now. Do play with your silly little plants. I mean, Dad actually wants me to look pretty. I'm I'm pretty um, happy with that permission. Um, it's later on in the evening. And um, some of the guests are gathering around, and they're uh, Moses is like walking around the court, and you see all these rich upper classmen people, uh, upper classmen, upper class people. <laughs> they're just gathering around, and they're all like paying like respects to uh, your parents. And they're pretty Amos. much brown nosing the parents. Exactly, they're they're hobnobbing. Uh, they're they're doing what the elite and the aristocrats do. They're like, oh, yeah, look at this horse. This is kind of, uh, how much for this? Oh, it's fine. And they're trying to they're trying to get brownie points from each other. And Habibi emerges from within the house, and he said he wanted to dress nicely. But what does Habibi dress in? Um, 
So Habibi remembers like back from his childhood days, like he would and, and um, Moe's would switch clothes. So he was like, oh yeah, this this will be a great way to revisit the past. So he went and stole some of um, Moe's really gorgeous like silk outfits. So and put them on, and he looks he looks good. <laughs> um. So you're wearing feminine clothes is basically what yes. I'm hearing. All right. So as soon as you uh, emerge with your uh, more feminine attire, um, you can suddenly see like a hush fall along uh, the crowd and the, the the audience. And I mean, for the most part, they like a lot of the the male dressings in uh, in Osirian uh, tend to be what our Western society would consider, you know, almost dresses. Uh, they wear these traditional robes called galabeyas, uh, but I mean, there's clearly a feminine and masculine Galabeya style, and Habibi, whatever whatever the case may be, is wearing a feminine dress. And so you see a lot of people come out, uh, you come out of the, of the thing and there's a hush falls along the crowd. And as soon as everyone kind of looks at, uh, at them, you see your dad kind of like lean over to some of the aristocrats nearby and he whispers something with like a sidelong look at you and there's a scowl beneath his, what I assume, bushy mustache. <laughs> So and bushy. The bushiest of mustaches. And uh, as soon as that, he kind of like turns uh, turns away from you, but like gives you one final scowl. And your mom rushes up and approaches you like, Mary, Mary, what what are you wearing? What what, what, is, what, is, what is this you, you have on you? T take that off right now. Go, go back and change. This is this is a Moses clothing. Yeah, but I mean, Moses and I used to do this all the time. It should be no, fine. This is, this is very on, on Moses' special day. Couldn't you do this? On, oh, this is so ridiculous. I don't have time for this. Please, please, just, Dad just said go change. I could just had to be here and look pretty. Uh, not, oh, Mary, 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 why? You know, not like this. Just, uh, you, oh, sorry, just help me. I don't have time for this. Look, I have to attend to Moses and her special day. Just, please, don't, just don't, don't say anything. Don't, don't mess this up further, okay? Please, can you do that for me? Please. I'm not saying anything to that. She kind of like shakes her head and like walks off. And as you're like meandering through the the party, people are constantly like stealing glances at you, but they're they're still trying to pay attention to Mo's and you know make fancy and stuff. And eventually, you'll, you'll see like some people eventually stop by to try and pay respects to you, and they're like they're not like really fully paying attention to you. They're mostly paying attention to Mo's, her whores, the parents. Um. And at one point, one person is like, uh, servant, can you, can you please take this glass back to the kitchen? I'm done with it. And uh, I'm, I'm not the servant. I'm, I'm a Moses brother, Habibi. Oh, oh, I didn't know they adopted a brother. How, how, how jovial of them. How, how kind. That's, that's very nice of them. Well, anyways, uh, and they oh. go back to their conversation, completely ignoring you. They, they still give you the, the cup they put in your hands. Eventually, the party is over, and um, people are starting to dismiss for the evening. They're going to come back in the morning for the big race, but it's nighttime. I, uh, wait, so it's nighttime. I am going to try to leave, because I'm sick of this. Like, I just wanted to have a good day, and it's just... it just hasn't been good. Like, nobody's been nice to me. Nobody believes I'm, like, on Moses' Like brother, they all think I'm a charity case, so I'm ready to just go. It's not, it's not great. So Habibi's looking for a way out. <laughs> um, how how do you try to escape? Do you like jump out a window or something? Do you like what, what do you what do you how do you try to do this? Um, I'm not really that daring to jump out of. Tony's not around to help me out, so <laughs> I'm just gonna like try to sneak through the hallways <laughs> to get out through the main entrance. All right. Um, you try to snake your way through the hallways and eventually you uh come out into a room and you're met with your parents are just kind of sitting on uh on their two you know lounge chairs and they're whispering and they're clearly talking about you because as soon as they spot you they're like oh oh mary uh uh can you come over here a sec we, we need to we need to talk to you uh, i guess i was just just ready to head out at this hour come on th there's nowhere you have to be you don't you don't really have friends that they they will take you come <gasps> just, just just we need rude. to talk to you rude i mean i i do have friends and they were expecting me i'm like i'm already late uh and then your dad speaks up he's like mary we won't ask you again come here oh my gosh so H habibi gives it and he goes over and 
he he is waiting with his parents. Your dad's like yelling. He's like flailing his hands. Like, why are you like this? Why can't you? Why can't you just be normal? We ask you to do one thing. Just just sit there and look pretty. And what you do is you dress up like a girl. What? Why are you like this? I mean. Why can't you? We, we just asked you to be there for a Moe's. She has a nice horse. It's her special day. Just be there for your sister. Haven't we taught you anything about Osiris's values? Yes, you have. That's why I am the way that I am. Osiris would never ask you to be like this, to abandon your family in the time of need. He is the god of family and community. Why can't you be part of this family? But I am a part of another community, oh. and I am making my own family. Family? No. Mary, just listen to me. And your dad kind of like leans forward. He like puts his fingers underneath his chin. He's like trying to be like the quote unquote cool dad at the moment. He's like, listen, son, those friends of yours, and he like gives air quotes, they're not real friends. In, in your time of need, every friend will eventually leave you. Only us, and he like gestures to himself and his mom and your and your mom. Only us, only we, your family, your real family, will be there for you. Who's always there to get you out of trouble? Tawny. Us. That's exactly what we said. Exactly us. <laughs> what when we're when when you need things, who's there to provide for you? Uh, Tawny. Us. Exactly. <laughs> we're on the same page here. So why can't you just do this thing for us as well? Cause we're always there for you. We're always, we're always being nice. You, we give you this, this roof over your head. We give you nice food to eat. We, we treat you well. We give you proper education. We love you, son. Why can't you just do the things we ask you to? I don't know. Those words don't sound like love. And then your mom speaks up. She says, "Mary, just, I, I, I know you're going through your, your teenage rebellion years, but." Isn't it time for you to grow up a little bit? I'm I'm not a teenager anymore. <laughs> You're still my baby boy. And I just I don't understand why you haven't grown up yet. Just please be more responsible. We have we have expectations of you. Just go up to your room now. I I I I I'm tired. I've had a long day and you've made it very very hard and long for us too. Now now son just go upstairs to your room and listen to your mother, okay? I'm going to check on you in a, in a little bit. I don't want to make sure you're not sneaking out of the house like you always do. Fine. I guess I'll see you tomorrow morning, Ben. That's a good lad. Good lord. The next morning, a Mose is kind of like, this is before the sunrise. I assume you wake up, you hear this horse neighing and braying and, you know, being a horse. And you see a Mose, she's like taking care of the horse. And for whatever reason, you decide that you're tired of being in your room all night. And you feel this desire to go talk to your sister. And as you approach her, uh, she kind of like uh, slowly like kind of like looks up, greets you. And she goes, sorry about mom and dad. I, I hope they're not. I hope they weren't too hard on you last night. I, I heard them yelling at you. Are you okay? Yeah, I mean, it's it's nothing. I shouldn't expect anything else. It, it's fine, really. I, I wish there was something I could do, but I, I don't understand. I mean, why don't you just, why don't you just give them what, what they want, Mary, and just everyone, everyone will be easier. They'll leave, they'll lay off you. I just don't think I can live this way. I mean, I already, I have a way out. I have, like, I don't mind coming back to visit, but I just don't think I can stay. Well tell you the truth i i'm kind of at my limit with mom and dad too i kind of want to leave too but i don't think this is the way to do it i'm, I'm gonna finish this race today i have to i have to finish getting ready but just please take care of yourself okay i i can't stick up for you all the time and i mean we're adults now mary like you just 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 watch out just watch your back okay i know sis i'm I'm sorry. I, I'll try to do my best, and I know you'll do yours. I'm sorry you've had to be the, the perfect child this long. I mean, it's okay. And she, like, leans up and gives you a kiss on the cheek. All right, now, you'll you'll cheer for me, right? Of course. I, I know you, you. there's no way you won't win. And uh, at that exact moment, we cut immediately to the very end of the race as... 
uh, Amos cuts uh, past the finish line with her black stallion um, Osseus and like by a fraction with all the other uh, racers falling behind. Um, it's not that hard to tell, uh, especially you, Habibi, having been in this uh, this culture or society for so long. This was probably a rigged race from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but as soon as uh, the race is over, uh, we f we quickly fade from uh, Amos winning the race to her standing on this little uh, podium. And now the sun is uh, a, little, a little bit higher up in the sky. It's still early in the morning, um, but not quite sunrise anymore. And um, you see your dad. He's kind of like giving this big congratulatory celebratory speech and he's talking about uh about how his daughter Amos is look at her she's the not only the greatest horse breeder in all of Osirian but she's also the greatest racer I truly have the best child in the world no no father is ever more proud as I am etc etc and he's like talking about how Osiris blessed him with a wonderful daughter and he's only ever focusing on like he's talking about his offspring but he's only specifically focusing on a Moe's clearly, almost intentionally leaving uh, Habibi out of the list. Asshole. I'm so, like, Habibi's mm -hmm. so frustrated. He, like, he stands up and he's like, you know what? You act like you only have one child, but you had a son. And you see your mom just, like, stand up from the audience. She's like, Mary, Mary, sit down. Come on, please. I, what did we talk about? Sit down. Don't ruin this day for your sister. What, like, you ruined my day? And my name's not Mary. Like I said, I go by Habibi now. You look up and your sister's kind of giving you these big wide eyes. She's like, just sit down, please, just a little bit longer. And no, he's like, he's like, no, I've had it. This is enough. I, I put up with everything and I do all that you want me to do. And then I try to have a little bit of like self identity and you just try to scrub me away. Like I, I don't exist. Enough, sit down. And I will not call you by, what is that name you used, Habibi? That's not even a nickname. That's not a name at all. That's like somebody would say to somebody who's like, you are my beloved, but you, Habibi, he says with air quotes, are not mine. <gasps> sit down, Mary. Habibi. Oh, he did not. He doesn't even sit. He just, he just, he storms off. He can't, he can't look at it anymore. He, he walks away to the necro necropolis. You storm off into the necropolis. You quickly grab your adventuring pack always ready to leave at a moment's notice and you storm off to the gate of the necropolis and you see uh the the priests of phrasma and they're they're closing the gate door behind them you see an adventurer uh like quickly around like wait 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 hold on don't close the gate and you can you can see you can't hear from this distance but you can see the the priests are kind of like shaking their hands like i'm sorry i'm sorry you can't you can't come in if you're by yourself we need you with your group um, it's dangerous inside that you can keep see, kind of see them mouthing. So I can't get in by myself, but I remember Tani and I used to sneak around and I, I think, I think I can do, I think I can hop the wall. So you quickly sneak around past the, uh, the Frasman priest and you find the section of the wall that, uh, you always snuck in with Tani illegally, um, at night when it was most dangerous, but that's how you and Tani liked it. Yeah. Uh, you quickly find uh, the, the the gap in the wall where the stones are most brittle, and you put your fingers and the footholds, uh, in the hand and footholds that you've uh, done dozens of times. And all the while, these words are f like flying through your head. Your dad screaming, uh, Habibi is not a name, and you are definitely not mine. And... Um, all, all your mom just saying, why can't you just be normal? And your sister just saying, just just pretend for one more day, please. I can't watch your back anymore. And all of their voices are flying past your head. Eventually, you you make your way through the, uh, the necropolis and you're just stumbling around. You pass by all these different adventuring groups and uh, you see, um, you know, deserted buildings, destroyed uh, monuments, shrines, marketplaces. And... Eventually, you find a chicken. It just approaches you. And it kind of pecks at your, your feet a little bit, and it seems hungry. Okay, so thankfully, I have some bread that I took from home because, you know, they don't need it. 
And um, <laughs> Habibi just starts breaking off little pieces. And you know what? This chicken, he's he's got a pair of ears, so he might as well listen to what I have to say. I mean, he probably listens better than the people that I call family back home. So Habibi's like feeding this chicken. He's like, why, why can't they just accept me? It's like, I don't, it, it shouldn't be that hard. I, I, it's not like I've failed at everything in life. I make a decent cleric. I serve Osiris with my whole heart. I don't, it's like not, Amos isn't even that special. Like, I know she's a girl and she's going to inherit everything, but like, I basically do everything Amos does. I mean, I don't have a horse, but, and like, as he's feeding this chicken, he, he runs out of food for the chicken. Uh, and you see the, the chicken at your feet kind of like pecks at your feet after a while. It's like, where's, where's, where's my food? Where's my food, bitch? Um, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't have any more food. Uh, but thank you for listening. It pecks at you a little harder and like it actually hurts ah, you this time. No, oh, no, don't do that. Leave me alone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it just keeps getting angry and angry until eventually it just cries out and like, kakar, kakar. And then suddenly <laughs> from behind all of these buildings and old ruined stalls, you just see dozens of chicken heads pop out. <laughs> Like, <laughs> one after the other, and like, oh my gosh. Oh, oh no. <laughs> my big attack! <laughs> and you just, oh. I imagine this shot from behind, um, uh, from behind Habibi looking up. He's in silhouette, and there's just this flood, this wave of chickens, and like, their eyes glowing with anime stars as they descend upon him, and we just see the camera like zoom up into the sky as we hear a scream from Habibi. Like, Gosh, and uh, in case it wasn't obvious, Habib, you're being attacked by a chicken swarm. <laughs> <laughs> and I need you to roll me initiative. <laughs> so the reality is we just had this really, you know, deep and sad and horrible day for Habibi. And Habibi's just walking around and just trying to feed this chicken, making a new friend. And runs out of food and the chicken's like, ah, uh, no, no, you're not getting away with this. It just... Calls all of his friends. That's how we do it here at the Mithril Tabletop. Sadness and laughter, hand in hand. This is the beak comedy. I know. I said, would you call this beak comedy? Instead of How dare you? Get out. No. No. Sorry, I was trying to wing that. Okay, all right. Aaron! Aaron, just don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> oh, his you laugh at, huh? <laughs> oh, gosh, Come on. Dude. Come on. Time is flying by. All right. How yeah, fucking dare initiative. you? Yeah. Initiative. Initiative. I'm, I'm carrying over everyone else's initiative, which means, uh, as far as I can tell, it is still Tawny's turn. You have three actions. It's your turn. Okay. Um, she immediately is like, Habibi, I see you. <laughs> and um, runs for first two actions to get right by the swarm. Oh, I can get right here. Um, and is just going to start trying to swing at the chickens. <laughs> just, <gonna, laughs> just like sweeping it like side to side. Like, let Habibi go. <laughs> Leave him alone. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna have My so much fun with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a 15 on the die for a 23. Uh, 15 on the die for a 23 is going to hit. Easily roll me some damage. Is it a critical hit? Because I'm flanking. It's not a crit. Aww. Aww. 21 points of damage. 20 holy, holy shit fuck. points of damage. <laughs> Um, so you see Tawny come in with this gigantic axe and she sweeps through this thing. There are so many chickens here, but with one single swoop, at least half of them are gone. <laughs> oh, baby, I got you. I got you. You, you just see this blood and splatter as feathers, <laughs> feathers. And, and chicken Dinner. wings, everything. <laughs> <laughs> We're eating chickens tonight, friends. 
Chicken, chicken. <laughs> chicken dinner, chicken. Wait, what is it? Oh, Lordy, help me. Winner, uh, winner, chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, Tariq, you're up. It is your turn next. Well, it's just uh, Tariq and McFour left uh, still in the sand. So seeing that McFour has like zero energy left, Tariq kind of has a little bit of pity on him. He's like, <laughs> all right, let's go. So he's going to kind of like pick uh, McFour up and... Um, and just basically carry him off and follow Kepri to where he suddenly hears like <laughs> some commotion and there's a bunch of squawking and like uh, a bunch of like, and he, he open he like, he finally gets into this market where uh, he's hearing all this noise and he, he hears uh, Habibi shouting and he just sees Tawny slaughtering a bunch of chickens. It's like, what the heck? And as soon as, as soon as Tariq picks up McFour, <laughs> McFour is obviously like gonna nuzzle into Tariq's body and just like cuddle up as much as possible. <laughs> and Tariq is like, um, I forgot about that. <laughs> Tariq, Tariq just goes like a heavy sigh, like. <sighs> My but he doesn't. He doesn't Paris press the Mueller, issue. Paris you're my hero. <laughs> he doesn't press the issue. He's just like, yeah, I probably should have thought that one through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're just you're just spending all that time. Uh, well, I mean, just uh, yeah, like it. yeah, it's gonna take that many actions to get to where everybody else is. Fair enough, Habibi. It is your turn. You are surrounded by this chicken swarm. Now, allow me to describe some of the traits of this chicken swarm. They have an aura called cacophony. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's a, they cause a cacophony with all their flapping beaks and screeching caws and and just pecking sounds all over the place uh it's very loud <laughs> this might be a problem for any auditory effects such as for example spell casting oh, what would man. you like to do um snap crackle pop rice krispies <laughs> well now it's not impossible you can still cast a spell it'll just be a little harder my first reaction actually is I, I see I see Tawny, so you know she's my my best bud, and I'm so thankful. I can't quite hear what she's saying, but I see her yelling like Habibi, and I see her swing that axe, and man, she's taking out chickens. <laughs> That's why she's my best friend, guys. Oh, she's my best friend. She's a real bad bitch. Make her own money. That's right. That's right. She don't need so no Habibi's money. gonna run right up next to uh, Tawny, kind of away from the chickens. Uh, on the other side, so that way, you know, Tawny between him and the chicken seems like a really good place to be. And <laughs> he's gonna, uh, do some lay on hands on Tawny, because I think she could use an extra boost, and he wants to be as supportive as he can be. So, he's gonna cast lay on hands. <laughs> Fantastic. And, uh, that's still only six healing, right? You're, you're not at, uh, you're not at second level spells yet, so it's not upgraded yet? Yep, that's six points of healing. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Six points is still six points. Oh, man. Here I thought you guys were going to be worried. Or here I thought uh, I was worried for you guys for having two additions back to back. Uh, all right. Is that all your actions? Uh, I think I have one action left, but I want to go ahead and end my turn here. All right. Fantastic. Um, Kareth, it is your turn. So question, but I'm pretty sure you know the answer, but I want to double check just to be safe. Um, so we stayed in initiative order. So we, um, there has not been technically any time between no. the last fight and this fight. Because I'm Correct. technically okay. still raging. Because I was able to find a target. Yep. Uh, she is, um, is she's it, actually halfway through her rage. You can feel her rage, like, subsiding a little bit. Would this square here be flanking with Tawny? Right here? Uh, yes. Okay. And I should be able to get there easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So you quickly stride opposite Tawny, directly a away from this chicken swarm. And he's, like, sidestepping the uh, carnage already that is on the ground. Because I imagine there are slaughtered chickens all over oh, yeah. the place. Yeah, they're still feathered. Um, the I'm just imagining, the like, they're he'll, so he'll be hungry that they're starting to eat each other. No! <laughs> it's a on the bit. Oh. I mean... <laughs> Peck, 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 peck. Ugh, I hate all of you. <laughs> oh, actually, I have a great thing for this. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. No, I can't do it. It has the unstable trait. Damn it. Oh. No. That's why I needed to see Are if... Are you going to fry the chickens? If, like, there had been at least 10 minutes, because I was going to try to do explode, but I can't. <laughs> 
because <laughs> I need 10 minutes, and it's been like six seconds. All right. You'll be fine. These things are, there's only a few left. You can't take care of a couple of chickens. Chickens are scary. Back, back. Anyway, uh, let me scary. target the damn thing. And I am just going to try and whack out a couple of chickens. That is going to be a 10 on the die for a total of a 17 to hit. 17 just barely misses. Wait, no, you're flanking. It hits because you're flanking. Yay! Aha! That Modifiers is... Modifiers matter, folks. Seven points of damage, two of which is cold. Fantastic. All right. The cold seems to completely go through, but it does resist some of your physical amounts of damage. There's only like five chickens left. All right. Attack number two and final action. That is going to be a 19 on the die for a total of oh, a 21. Beans. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Yeah, that's, that's going to be a hit. All right. That is six points of damage, two of which is cold. All right. Before they even get a turn. I was so Yay! sad to have so many cool things. My Air whole five. food chicken swarm. No. The cacophony. The chickens Somebody died. That's how you take care of a chicken swarm. Do you want to know why they died? It's because Tawny crit them basically on the first round. No. Because. Nice. Oh, get out, get out of here. You know what? That baby dies. Rock fault. I need to be dead. No. <laughs> you cheater. Oh, so sad. I, I, I spent like a whole hour working on homebrewing these chickens. I combined the squirrels and the bats together. <laughs> Every time you do that, they get murdered but in front of your I eyes. I know. Well, I try not to make them so strong because I'm like, I don't want to like, if, I, if you homebrew a monster and it's overpowered, it's way worse than if you homebrew a monster and it's underpowered. So, so we're out of initiative, But yeah, right? I mean, you guys dealt so much damage there. Are we out of initiative? Yeah, we're out of initiative okay. now. <laughs> okay, good. Kepri's coming up to this chicken swarm now. Kepri and Ramses. Okay, guys. That's fine. Here's the thing. We cannot let this hey, look, go to waste. Hey, look, there's lots of treats for Ramses. I know. We cannot let this go to waste. So she's going to start kind of grabbing everything and putting it together in a pile. And I know this sounds messed up, but just wait with me. Does anybody have water? <laughs> Are we having chicken and dumplings? Yes, exactly. So we need to start getting this cleaned. We need to start plucking, and then I can start using some fire to to. I have this. fire. Okay, I do too. Do you so know just there. how disturbingly messy that would look <laughs> right in now? The like middle of the city, just a bunch of <laughs> they not not just like butchered, but like hacked chickens. <laughs> like I mean, it's essentially like roadkill looking almost with Tawny's <laughs> axe and everything. Like it's not like a nice neat. Uh, cutting of their heads. I mean, they're like, they were slaughtered, but like in the massacre. Tariq, person. Tariq, <laughs> Tariq, stop, stop using your logic. We need to save the meat. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Tariq's not going to like, if he's going to participate in eating said chicken later, he's not going to watch that because that's just like too ick for him. Remember, he's got a sensitive stomach, so he's going to be like, and he's gonna walk over what, to like another he's gonna walk over to a market booth all. somewhere and distract himself what if i just fire them all so that they are pre-cooked and then we can just you know portion them out but we need to take the feathers off that's the problem now i think there's a couple chickens over here that were mostly spared the ones that are smushed into the ground, there's nothing we can do with. We're just going to have to leave that for the vultures. But uh, there's a couple over there that, you know, I think Tawny got a pretty clean, clean cut off of. So we're going to take those and, oh, oh, we're in the mar We're kind of in the necropolis right now, right? So I bet we can uh -huh. sell these things. Uh -huh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, as soon as they start putting the chickens, like, in the fire, whatever, McFour yells over and says, No, you're ruining them. And then sees the <laughs> ones that are on the ground for the quote unquote vultures and runs over to those and starts to like eat them up that way. McFoy, they're they're raw. You're gonna get sick. I'm a Stop gobbler. it. And then Ramses is barking and starts to eating it goes next to McFour and starts eating them too. <laughs> Ramses, stop it! Oh lordy. I want, okay, so a common criticism of a lot of Paizo adventure paths is that they're very railroaded. I want anyone to listen to our adventure path, read the PDF for the first book of Mummy's Mask, and tell me that this adventure is railroaded. I dare you to find the chicken swarm cookout the encounter in the very beginning. During all this, Capri's just sitting on the ground with the few chicken, chickens that are actually, like, well, relatively intact. 
and she's just working on defeathering them. <laughs> oh my god, I swear to god. We're gonna have chicken tonight! Alright, well, <laughs> is there anything you guys want to do before we go back to the railroad that I was talking about earlier? <laughs> Tawny's gonna look at Habibi, and she's just gonna be like, I thought you wanted me to come get you, like, at seven tonight, like, to save you from whatever dinner you were forced at. Like what happened? Why why were you being swarmed by chickens? <laughs> chickens of all things. <laughs> I mean stuff happened and I just I had to get out of there. Like I couldn't I just couldn't be there anymore. You know how my family is. Tony just kind of like nods like, "Yeah, yeah. Was it your dad again? I swear, you just need to let me have a minute with him." I mean, just just a minute, Habibi, like <sighs> This one. I just need one with my axe. I just, <laughs> just one. Honestly, it was all of them this time. Like, I don't know. I might have burned the bridge finally. I don't know. Well, you know my family will always let you stay with us. You know that. And, of course, we're always going to be adventuring. So it's not like, um, you know, we won't have a place to be. That's true. And, like... You're more my family. Like, my dad made some really good points. You're more my family than they ever have been. Well, that sucks, because I know you love your sister, and I I just wish she had a little bit more of a backbone. Yeah, I mean, but she she has had to, you know, hold up all of that responsibility. Yeah. And be their perfect child, since I can't. Well, I think you're perfect. You're at least my perfect friend. Oh. Aww. Collective alls across the <laughs> so group. so cute. <laughs> and Tawny looks over and sees, like, everyone watching them. Um, right. So, what, we're, <laughs> oh, we just beat these scorpions. Um, a lot of us went down. I'm so glad you're back, Habibi. <laughs> Only two. <laughs> Only two. I mean, yeah, you guys did look kind of rough when you came and picked me up. I felt great. I'm going to live forever. That's my line. I sure hope so. I mean, I think I think we're all gonna we're all gonna live life well. A bunch of scorpions just took us down. We haven't even gone in yet. So, did we figure everything about these scorpions? Like, uh, do we think that they're part of a huge colony? You get the sense that, like most things in the necropolis, they were just uh, uh, scavenging for food, and food is scarce in the necropolis. It's mostly um, surrounded by undead. There's not really much of an ecosystem. So, anything that lives in the necropolis is. Uh, like a scavenger, or it's like starving for food, and or is dead. Uh, if chick, or or dead, uh, or like for example, if chickens accidentally fly over the wall and then can't fly back out, they eventually get really hungry and then get murdered to death by quote unquote heroes. Quote unquote. Because <laughs> <laughs> we murdered them in cold blood. Well, now we have That's food for this. Oh my gosh, guys! The other thing we can do is leave a couple of them out sitting in the sun, so they can kind of a. Uh... Jerkify. Oh lord. <laughs> Jerkify. So, um, get some chicken out. Waba, Jer- so how many uh, rations do we get from the chickens? I will think about that until next week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, anyway. Um, did we come into this place from the north or the south? Uh, you kind of came from it from the south, but the entrance is up here to the north of the map. Um, but either way, would would you like me to re-describe the area um or do you guys remember it from um... last week? Um, well, Habibi was not here last week, so... Uh, let me re-describe it then. A rectangular stone mausoleum sits alone in what appears to have once been an actual cemetery. The trunks of a few dead trees poke out of the sand around the tomb, and a hot breeze whistles through the desecrated branches. Now it's really hot, especially because it's like noon. A set of massive stone double doors is affixed to the northern side of the structure beneath a facade bearing the likeness of an Assyrian man you guys have identified to be Akintepi. Windblown sand is heaped around the crypt, partially burying the doors that lead within. Upon closer inspection, actually, since you guys are at the door now, you can see that the cr- uh, the crevices of the door have, like, plaster and mortar kind of, like, put in there, but it also um, looks a little cracked. Can somebody roll me some sort of architecture or engineering lore or a crafting check or crafting. a perception check? I'm going to say Kareth should probably do this. This will be blind. This will both be blind GM rolls. Uh, we need to roll two crafting and perception or one of the two. 
one or the other. So either a crafting slash related lore check or a perception check. All right. Well, um, as I'm waiting for more rolls to come in, <clears throat> I can say right now that all of you um, have succeeded in identifying that this door has no hinges. Okay. <laughs> or at least no visible hinges or handles. Um, taking a look at the structure and like knowing your history from similar structures in the past, um, you get the sense that this thing um, swings outwards, that the hinges and uh, handles must be on the inside. Can I, can I break it down? Hold, hold on. Um, I will give Kepri, however, because you rolled so Yay. well, uh, a critical success, in fact. Uh, you identify that some of the seams have been uh, apparently like jabbed in with a crowbar in the past, indicating that the doors were once opened from uh, long ago, although it's hard to tell how long ago. Um, however, whatever, whatever happened, the doors clearly seemed to have been once sealed, opened, and then resealed again. Guys, these look like they are resealed. Break it down! I mean, it makes sense, because from the, like, I don't know if the characters per se would know this, but, like, we know from the uh, prologue flashback things that Waba's done that there was some, this plague of madness basically yeah. made people go mad and the city got overrun by the dead. So they probably, you know, were trying to find survivors, found that it was full of not nice things, and sealed it back up. True. You also remember from a, uh, from last session that you guys identified this, uh, that Akintepi, uh lived from 2416 and died in uh, 2488, which is just 11 years before the Plague of Madness. So he died relatively close to the Plague of Madness, probably too soon to have been grave robbed. Mm. So this probably wasn't but grave rob, you're saying. Clearly someone went into his tomb afterwards. Oh, why? So, okay. guys. Probably no one nice. I think we might need to break the door down. But can we try to keep it in one piece just in case there's stuff on the back of it? We I need? don't think you can break the door down and not break the is door. Is it a solid seam? Like, is there something that we can... Can I try, like, using my axe to, like, like jimmy it open kind of thing? Pry it open? Yeah. So there is there is still a heap of sand. Like, it's halfway up the door. It, it would probably start by uh, undigging that out. Oh, can we dig that out? Uh, yeah, and that one just takes an hour of sweaty labor. So who is going Ooh. to be engaging in Me. the digging? I will. Is it just <gasps> you spend the Ramsey's. time, or is there actually a roll? You spend the time, and then roll for Ramsey's. If you fail the save, you become Ramsey's pretty. loves to dig. He's a dog. I'm, well, then Ramsey's okay, can help. I, I want to help. Um, is the fortitude save a blind one, or is it just a self? No, you can roll it. You can roll it yourself. Okay. okay. Uh, Hubby's <laughs> helping. Hubby's helping. Capri roll a 22, and Ramsey... 22 for Capri? Yeah. What Angela I got get? a natural 20. Yep, figure uh, that. 19 for uh, Ramsey's. <laughs> I'm going to use a hero point and re-roll mine. Okay, go ahead and reward your hero point. Uh, what did Ramsey's get? 19. 19. And Alyssa? Uh, Habibi got a 13. A 13 is unfortunately not enough. <laughs> I figured. So, Habibi it's better tries than a to, 6. <laughs> Habibi tries to help. However, um, I mean, he's... He's not made for this kind of work. <laughs> he's, he's I mean, had, Tani, had... do, Tani normally does all of this for them. Like, when they're out and right. about, Tani does the heavy lifting. Like, that's just how it's been. Yeah. And he's had a very privileged, privileged life. It, it kind of makes sense. I want to pull my uh, weight, but I can't. Luckily for you, the fatigue only lasts for an hour. Um, unlucky for you, I determined when that hour passes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, all right, so the door has now been dug away, and you can see that there are easy, uh, now that it has been broken out once before, there are easy seams you can kind of, like, place, like you said, your axe in and try to, like, sh like pry the door open. It will, however, because it is so big and thick and heavy, require a successful athletics check. That sounds like Tawny's area of expertise. Um, Natural 20 again? No, I rolled a 14 on the die for a 22. 
a 22 is sufficient and you pry the door open revealing the chamber within <gasps> um all right so the door opens up to this rectangular room uh, and it's mostly empty save for some engravings and fixtures upon the walls a pair of heavy stone doors to the north and an immense stone wheel against the south wall so you guys just move the door to the north there's a there's another door to the south and it's this gigantic thick wheel um all four walls bear sunken relief engravings and hieroglyphs um, and it looks like they were once beautifully painted in all these uh, uh, primary colors, but now the paint has long since chipped off and decayed, and you just see the uh, the brown uh, sandstone uh, beneath. Small stone faces are affixed to the walls at about shoulder height uh, at each corner. Uh, the stone wheel to the south is engraved with a large spiral and is set in stone tracks on the floor and in the ceiling. Almost like Scorpion. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, who here is trained in religion? Just trained. Um, I, I am. I, I am. I am as well. I am not. Well, I know the cleric is. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tani, Kareth, uh, Habibi, and anyone else who is trained in religion. Kepa, yep. you too? McFour, uh, Tariq, finish off the party? Nope. Oh, <laughs> so everyone, that, everyone that tracks. Honestly, no, no. Th this is such a famous goddess. You probably all recognize the holy symbol of Phrasma. Oh yeah, because it's gonna be all around the city. Like it's it's not like yeah. a symbol that is yeah. like in, we wouldn't know. Yeah, like it's kind of like the cross. I also, but I'm also an expert in society. But I feel like that's such a big person in in the thing. The society would be enough to have me know that as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, as everyone was like di spending the hour in the hot sun digging up, uh, if, I don't know if you noticed, but Tariq did not volunteer for that labor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was sitting in the, uh, the sand in um, the shade and was looking through his spell book and, you know, just enjoying himself. And then he hears suddenly the, uh, the cracking of the door opening and he closes his spell book and he's like, yeah, I can go in now. <laughs> and, and just wow. like uh, moves to the to the front, and um, yeah, he'll if he uh, he kind of moves past Tawny, and he's gonna enter the room. <laughs> You're not even gonna check for traps. Tawny is like trying to grab nope. him, like pulling. Well, him he's back. going to he's going to when he walks into the room, he's going to check. Oh my god! As your foot well, slowly sinks into the floor is <laughs> also right behind Tariq and McFour automatically rolls for trap checks, so. Uh, he has, uh, his lantern reveals uh, secret doors and traps, well, at least allows him to check for that, but yeah, no, it, so long as, uh, as, as McFour is nearby, you guys should be fairly confident there's at least someone looking for traps. Okay. Uh, either way, uh, you don't find any traps. Okay. Is there anything right. else in this room? that we happen to like maybe we didn't see because we were in the doorway um well there's those hieroglyphs i described earlier if somebody wants to roll a society check to translate um them. but don't they have uh, to know we'll do that don't they have to know the language they need to know osiriani to be able to translate the ancient osiriani uh, hieroglyphs um, would um osiriani lore give a bit of a bonus sure it would have okay what about old god's lore <laughs> Uh, not in this case. <laughs> Dang. What about undead lore? <laughs> Definitely. Oh God, Absolutely. You know what? Nobody bother rolling. Undead lore. Roll me that <laughs> one. <laughs> um, all right. So looking at the results, we go with, uh, let's just go with Kareth, Tawny. Yep, that's it. Kareth and Tawny. We uh, did it! You guys are, are reading these hieroglyphs, and you're, like, on opposite sides of the room. Uh, Tawny's to the to the east, and Kareth is a little bit to the west. And uh, you guys read the, the ancient Assyrian script, and it, it seems to say, uh, This is Akintepi's tomb. It is well defended, and those who defile it tempt the wrath of the gods. The only thing the Lady of Graves despises more than Grave Robber is an unsuccessful Grave Robber. Oh. Oh, jeez. And then finally, uh, on your side, Kareth, it just says, turn back while you can. Ooh. 
Turn back. Turn back now. So we're going forward, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nothing to worry about, guys. Uh, the two, there are a few short statues, uh, kind of like etched all over the place. Uh, you quickly recognize a few of them to be, um, Phrasma. Um, but the other two are a little bit more unusual, uh, especially, they, they seem to have the face of a jackal with an unusual headdress. Uh, Habibi, this is where old god lore would come in. Wait. You got this, Habibi. Capri, Tariq? I believe you also have I old do. god lore. And I think, Tariq, do you have that? No, you don't. No. I do not. I was going to say, Tariq's going to pull out a, a torch um, while everyone's kind of studying the hieroglyphs so they can get a little bit sure. more uh, light. Um, all right, so I will give it to uh, Habibi and Kepri uh, for your old god's lores. Um, you guys identify this as an older depiction of Anubis. Uh, and this is how uh, a lot of the ancient Osirianic gods uh, seemed to uh, depict him. He's the ancient Osirianic god, ancient Osiriani god of burials and mummification. Mm -hmm. uh, closer inspection of the faces also reveals them to be some sort of decorative torch holders, such as that uh, when uh, torches are placed within them, a corona of flame would surround the deities' heads, uh, making them appear more regal. Alright, so uh, is there anything else you guys would like to do? Um, can we go inspect? Can we? Can hold on. Sorry, as I say, can like twenty times. Can I please detect magic? <laughs> sure. Um, you detect a faint amount of magic coming from the two statues of a uh, two faces or like busts of Anubis. Uh, it's very faint though, and it seems the magic has eroded over a long period Does of time. Does anyone else want to do something with these statues? Tariq will take a closer look at the statue. Here, I'll switch you, Tariq. You go in front of me. Okay, Tariq's gonna step in front of the statue, and um, can he, since we're sensing magic, can he roll an arcana check? Sure. You get the sense that uh, these sconces were placed here by the priests who constructed this tomb um, as a means of easily moving apart this stone door in case they needed to return to uh, the tomb within for any reason. Um, this, the, uh, these would be secrets held by the, uh, the priests of Anubis and Phrasma um, as kind of like a back entrance into the tomb. So this door in front so, of... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Tariq. I was going to say, it looks like these might help open the door. Do we want to trust it? Do we want to trust us? That's the really hard part is... <laughs> yes. I, Kareth says yes. Kareth says yes, so I'm inclined <laughs> to no say no. There's no other way in. There's no other way in, so... Well, it is a round door, and there seems to be a track above and below. Tawny, Tawny's going to look at Habibi, and she's going to be like, you want to do this? Yeah, let's do this. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> That's all it took, guys. <laughs> All it took. took. Do we? Do you think we need to? How many? Is there just one, or is there one on each side? There's one right in front of you, Tariq, and there's one right in front of Habibi. All right, Habibi, on three. One, All right. two, two, three. three. Wait, what, what are you guys doing? What are you counting down for? Moving. Don't it we have together. to pull something? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. the door. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let me describe it. I thought you were gonna do something with the sconces. Yeah, um, I thought you said the sconces. Like, I thought it was like you know, like you. You like turn pull the lever, Kronk. No, yeah, no like lever. roll the lever. You just punch torches. Uh, you just... Did you miss the flavor text? If the, the response is if. <laughs> did you? Apparently. I thought you said okay. The way I the way I understood it, I thought it was like you know like a, a trap door or whatever, like where you no. like where it moves when like people don't think it's an object that moves and you like pull like, it or something like, like that because like it's all case. secretive. That's what I thought you said. Like right. a bookcase door. No, let me try this again. Okay. Upon closer inspection of the faces, it also reveals them to be decorative torch holders, uh, such that when torches are placed within them, uh. a corona of flame uh. surrounds the deity's head. Oh. <laughs> I totally you said understand nothing that about that, sir. I absolutely. I have a recording. I you can didn't think about flames. Yeah, he did. I remember it. I absolutely did. He did. Think about flames. Well, he did. I don't oh. want to give up my torch. Never mind. Though, so, is there? Are there any yeah, torches? Five. Why are we trying to do that? Huh? We have cantrips. That Why do are we fire. trying to do that? Can we? Can the door just open? 
You can try. Like, do we need it? But it's a round door. It's a round door. There's no, like... So? It's... Okay. I mean, we can try. Yeah, we can try. Yeah, maybe in Tariq. Uh, but no. on the Tariq side. rolls up his sleeves and he said, door. I guess I can put a little muscle into it this time. <laughs> <laughs> Tawny just kind of, like, gives him a really dirty look. Like, you <laughs> sissy little boy. <laughs> like... And then Jeffrey <laughs> is just sitting here at her, you know, super, super short stature going, all right, let's do it. Let's do uh, it. So Tariq tries to push against the door. Uh, and I oh, guess man. also Tawny, right? Yeah, I guess. I'm going to try to. All right. what? No, she wants to watch Tariq fail this first before <laughs> she gets involved. I know. Well, I know. Tariq tries to push on the door yes. by himself. And this is a roughly 5,700 pound oh. solid stone door. Oh, okay. oh, you left out that what is, part. I said it was a giant but door. But what does a natural 20 get me? A natural 20 is hernia. dependent <laughs> on what the total 28. is. 28. Is a critical failure. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Well, technically, it's just a failure now. Tariq goes back to the scones, scones and uh, sticks a, a torch in it. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> It's gone. Uh, it's not gone. I got a torch as well. Let me, let me just... describe the door real quick. It, so it's a 10 foot diameter, six inch thick, uh, solid granite door. Now, Tani, as you shift, as you put all of your power into it, rolling a natural 20, you did notice that it like kind of like shifted like an inch. You feel like if you were to combine all of your strengths together, you would be able to move it mechanically speaking this door will only move when a total strength score of 50 is applied to it. Okay. So if oh. Tariq and Tawny did it together and both got a 25 or higher? No, strength score, not athletics. Yeah, um, my strength So score. do we even have a high enough score My strength with score. Well, oh. everyone would have at least a 10 probably. Or we can I'm just fatigued. put torches. You want to try that? In we can, the holder. Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. My strength score is an 8. <laughs> I've got a torch. So, Tariq already placed a torch in one. Oh, I, um, Habibi right, did too. Have you put another one? Both statues of Anubis, their eyes seem to glow as a corona emanates from behind them. And you can see kind of like a very faint uh, blue spiral glow on the round door. But the magic is so faded, it does not roll. However, somebody roll me a religion check. I have a good religion. Do you have to be trained in it? <laughs> Everyone is trained, but you. <laughs> yes, but you can you can still roll it anyways. You might be. Yeah, I, can, I might get way. a nat, nat twenty. I wouldn't know if I did, but I could. You're right. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna want to inspect Tawny's dice because she rolled another natural <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, but her Habibi, Tariq, and Kareth, you all recognize that uh, the the blessings of Anubis seem to be lessening the strain uh, necessary to move. The door. Uh, it now only requires a total strength score of forty to move. Okay. Well, okay. I have an. I have uh, eighteen by myself. I have eight. Tariq is gonna <laughs> go put torches in the other, other holders. Oh, what Ramses have? At the back of the, like near the doors. Ramses How is Ramses gonna help move a round door? Ramses has fourteen. He puts his paws on exactly. it. Exactly. All right. So Tawny has eighteen. So does Tariq. So just by them alone, S36, literally Kepri or Kareth or Habibi or anyone else could help push the, the last little Let's bit. Let's all push the so door. So can we put in, are these the only two places that we can put torches in or can we do it in the back as well? There's two more in the back. I, I already said that Tariq went and put one in the back corner. In both of them? As soon right. as like, as soon as the, it didn't open all of them. Well, he just went, so he went to the one that was on his side at the back. So he didn't put one in the far right corner. McFlor is finally noticing that like these torches are lighting up around the corner and he's like, oh, I can do that. And he goes to the one that isn't lit yet and he just puts his lantern like where the torch flame would be and just like uses his <laughs> tail to hold the lantern there to like shine the light that way. All right. Uh, and with the blessings of Phrasma, the strength score reduces down to 30. Yeah, so hey. just with me and uh, Habibi. We got this. Oh. All right. So you and Habibi lean in together and slowly roll this massive 10-foot, 6-inch uh, diameter, or 6-inch th thick uh, granite stone door. And... <laughs> 
but then, yeah, it reveals behind it uh, this small chamber. And there is a pitch black hole in the very center oh, of God. the room. Huh. Um, guys, don't fall in the hole. Someone stick your Tari, head in it. Will you come in here with your light? Will you light up our world? You know it. And he winks at her as he walks by. Oh my god. What a little player. This is a very flirty part. Every season do that. I don't she know what you're talking elbows about. elbows him and she's like, behave. Mick Four sees that and just has this moment of like, <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> this square room is starkly devoid of any markings or adornment. In the center of the chamber's floor, a square shaft drops straight down into pitch black darkness. No sound, no magic, no light of any kind. You uh, you bring your, your staff closer, uh, Tariq, and I believe it has a range of currently 20 feet of bright light and 20 feet of dim light. Nothing. McFour, same with your torch or your lantern. Nothing. McFour, however, you do have dark vision and you can barely see the bottom of this 60 foot fall. Someone jump inside. And with that, we'll see you guys next week. What? Oh, no. I, I, was, I was about to jump in. And you just see Kareth flying down. I was like, no. <laughs> Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you liked what you heard, then please like, share, or subscribe to The Mithril Tabletop. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. Or feel free to email us at themithraltabletop at gmail.com. See you next week. Music and sound effects provided to you by Envato Elements. The Mummy's Mask is copyright 2014. Mummy's Mask images, characters, and artwork are all a trademark of Paizo Incorporated. <laughs>